Hey guys, uh, in this new Corona quick tip tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to utilize improved Corona anisotropy in uh, Corona release 1.3. So uh, what has changed since the last release was that an anisotropy now by default follows the local space of the object. It's no longer world space based and optionally you can set an isotropy to be UV space based as well. So we're gonna take a look at how to enable anisotropy and uh, how to use it in a, a local space first. So to see our effect, we're gonna create some metallic material. And uh, for an isotropy to work properly, uh, you need to have some amount of uh, glossiness on your objects. If, if I Increase the anisotropy, mm, positive means horizontal or just one direction, negative means another direction. If I change it like this, you can see it does nothing as long as we do not have any glossiness amount. Uh, if, if we have a, a glossiness amount, uh, that's 1.0, meaning, meaning complete mirror. So well, let's just introduce some glossiness to our object. And now when I start to increase the anisotropy, you can see how positive values are stretching the highlight vertically. So we can go to the extreme values, but again, keep in mind, the more extreme the value is, the, the more difficult it is to sample the reflection. So keep this, uh, keep this in mind, it, it may come with some, with some performance penalty. So if we go lower to the negative values, you can see the reflection now stretches horizontally. And again, you can also just put it uh, in the positive value and you can rotate the highlight using this rotation parameter. Uh, keep in mind this parameter is in degrees, so to rotate uh, the reflection 90 degrees, you actually have to input quite a large number 90 degrees in there to, to rotate the highlight. So you can see Right now, as, I, as, as I'm changing this, the highlight is rotating. Uh, so let's put it back. And if I go ahead and I start rotating the sphere, you can see the, the anisotropy is rotating with it. Let's say we have some more complex object. Let's say, I don't know, like, uh, let's create a teapot for now. Increase the subdivisions, get rid of the sphere, put our material on the teapot. And let's say we want our anisotropy to be stretching along some uh, some different axis. So if we just rotate the teapot like this, you can see the, the anisotropy stretching follows the object. So in order to uh, change the axis, we actually have to rotate the object in the sub-object mode. So if I rotate, oops, let's set this like this. If I rotate the object now in the Subobject mode, you can see that as, uh, as I'm rotating the object, um, the anisotropic orientation remains the same. So if I now exit the subobject mode and rotate the object back, you can see we have now the anisotropy stretched along the different axes. So this is this is how you basically change the axis of the of the anisotropy rotation, but uh, the lot more useful mode of the anisotropy is UV based, and I'm going to show this on a most typical object you would use anisotropy on, which is a cooking pot. Uh, cooking pots, uh, especially the stainless steel ones, usually have some distinct uh, brushing on the surface, and this brushing also defines. Uh, the stretching of the reflection as, this, as there is this uh, kind of microstructure that uh, that basically uh, reflects the light uh, along along the structure and creates these uh, stretched highlights so in order for our uh, uv based anisotropy to work properly first of all we need to have some sort of good uv layout on our object so let's just put some material on this and put the checker on the diffuse and if you increase it you can see i have my object with with quite nice uvs and 
<coughs> we can start working with that. It's not going to work if you have messed up UVs on your on your mesh. Another another thing I did is that uh, I expected that uh, on the edge on the sides of the pot uh, the brushing will be horizontal, but uh, on the top and the bottom or uh, on the bottom part uh, the brushing should be radial you see that those like uh, circular reflections usually on the pot so what i did is i dis i i assigned uh, uh, material id1 to the edges and material id2 to the bottom parts of our of our teapot uh, of our uh, cooking pot mesh so and with this done, I'm gonna use again. I'm gonna I'm gonna create just a new material. Let's call this a cooking pot. All right, and let's start creating this material. So again, reflection zero for stainless steel. I would use something like this. And right now, I'm gonna just grab new. Chrono multi map. We know that material ID two is the is our bottom, and material ID one is our sides. Uh, so let's just go to the advanced options, and here we can switch anisotropy orientation to UVW. So this is what we're going to do. And right now, if I just take this and plug it into anisotropy orientation. Let's set this to black first. Let's set this to black as well. You can see that uh, as I start to change the change the value of our uh, anisotropic uh, of our anisotropic rotation color, you can see how the reflection is kind of moving around, which is not. Oh, there we go. I forgot to actually <laughs> enable enable the anisotropy. There, now you can see the black is horizontal, and if we if we go to 64, that's perfectly vertical. If we go 128, then that's 180 degrees. So again, it's horizontal. If we go here, like 192. That's again vertical because that's 270 degrees and white is again horizontal because it's 360 degrees, which is uh, basically just the same as zero degrees. So with this in mind, we're just going to keep this at black, adjust our glossiness a little higher or rather our, yeah, let's, this actually looks good. So let's keep it this way. And uh, for the... Uh, material ID2, which is our bottom, we're going to use a texture. So for the texture, we will use gradient ramp, which we will set the mode to spiral. All right, once the mode is set to spiral, just connect it to the color slot 2. And you can already see some of that uh, radial reflection showing up in the bottom. Uh, the problem is uh, when you're using uh, the linear workflow inside of 3ds Max, uh, 3ds Max actually uh, applies the gamma also on the procedural textures and uh, that's not always desired. So in this case what we will have to do is to put color correction here and uh, set the gamma of this texture to the inverse gamma correction. That means 0.455 and once we do that we should get uh, correct straight uh, straight streaks of reflection it shouldn't be bent as it was with the gamma uh, with with the gamma gamma corrected texture so if i set it to one you can see there's this distinct bending as if as if the bottom of the cooking pot was uh, bulged even though it's completely flat so to get correct result we need to inverse gamma correct it to get this okay so now once we have this set up uh, the anisotropy on its own usually won't do so uh, the good practice to create a realistic anisotropic material is to combine them either with bump 
or a glossiness mapping to get some more definition in the in the uh, reflections so for this i'm just gonna duplicate our uh, corona multimap i'm gonna plug it to uh, plug it to the reflection glossiness and here i'm gonna use first the horizontal brushing texture which is just some texture i made in photoshop and as you can see it's just texture of horizontal brushes and i'm going to plug it in the color one and display it on our mesh as well we can see the streaking we can actually increase the tiling and we will decrease the blur so we can see the small detail and now i'm just gonna start to increase rgb level until we get our desired glossiness amount back okay so as you can see now we are getting both the uh, reflection stretching as well as some distinct uh, distinct uh, brushing texture this may be too much so i can just increase the rgb offset and uh, decrease the rgb level slightly to get less contrast like this and now we're going to do the same thing also for the bottom of the cooking pot so let's rotate it again so we can see the reflection inside i'm gonna duplicate the texture i'm gonna use the radial brush texture this time which looks like this and i'm going to put it in the color two i'm gonna set tiling back to one by one and preview it on our mesh as you can see it fits nicely uh, you can ignore this mapping because the texture is assigned only to the material id 2 material id 1 is our previous texture so it looks wrong in the viewport but it, it's right in the render and now again i can repeat the same process of adjusting the reflection glossiness texture but i think in this case it looks quite nice by default so i can just you know rotate it maybe like this and look around our object maybe the glossiness here is is too high so let's let's play with that here and as you can see we get uh, correct correct uh, brushing direction both on the edges of the cooking pot as well as on the bottom of the of the cooking pot so this is it for the anisotropy tutorial i hope you found it useful and i'll see you next time goodbye